Grace and peace to you in the name of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to our longest night service here at First United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're joining us for this service on the longest night of the year. An opportunity for us to, <clears throat> to look both at the darkness and the light, but for us to be together uh, in this time of year to think about all the things that fall in our hearts that maybe are not the first things that we would think about our grief, our mourning, our longing, all of it is, is safe and appropriate here. We're so glad that you joined us. Let us pray. Holy merciful God, we give you thanks for this night, for this opportunity to be together in this way, Lord, to, to put our whole selves before you, the joyful parts as well as the parts that perhaps are experiencing grief or challenge or difficult times or in this time of year. Lord, we put it all before you knowing that you are in the midst of all of it, that in your incarnation you are in the midst of all of our lives and every piece of it. We pray for all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. <clears throat> there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Tonight, I chose to focus on the beginning of John's gospel. Uh, during the Christmas season, often we spend a lot of time thinking about Matthew's narrative, about, the, about how Jesus was born, or, and on Christmas Eve, we focus on Luke's narrative, and we, we hear the, the beauty and, and the, the, the powerful stories that they paint. Um, but I chose John because John has a word for us in the midst of this longest night. Uh, John tells us of the word that came into the world who was 
These are important. It was life, and that life was the light of the world. And of course, as we gather together on this night, knowing that this is the longest night of darkness that we will have um, this year, <clears throat> it can be a, a difficult time. Uh, at nighttime, everything feels more difficult. I know um, when my kids have gotten homesick at camp, the night is always the worst. That's always the time. Just to, just this past weekend at, at winter camp at Altamont's, uh, Walker was there, and I was there as a chaplain, so he knew I was there, and we were even both there, but but his desire to kind of go to where I was sleeping, it was, it, was, it was more at night. We feel it deeply in the midst of the darkness. And John has a word to speak to us about that darkness. And it's not simply that darkness is bad. It's not simply that we should, it's not even that we should feel bad about being in darkness. That's not, I don't think that's what's going on here. Instead, the good word that we get from the gospel of John is that, is that the light has come into the darkness. But that when the light comes in the darkness, who is life, we recognize that, that he enters into the darkness. That it's not simply that that, that, that if we're in darkness, we're away from the light, but instead that he, in the incarnation, comes to be with us. Even in the midst of darkness, it says in Scripture that, that even the dark is not darkness to God. So if we're walking in darkness, God is there. If we're close to the light, God is there, because God, God is our light in the darkness. And I was trying to think about, about how to think about that, and I came across... Um, a word uh, from a woman named Norma Sessions. She has a blog where she talk, has talked about her experience of her loved one's uh, illness with Alzheimer's. And she has this reflection she recently wrote about the gift of presence. And it seemed like just the right thing for us to think about um, as we gather on this longest night. And I hope you'll be okay with me just reading it to you because there's some real power in what she wrote about her loved one, Dale. This is what she wrote. She says, as the anniversary of Dale's passing approached, the lasts grew vivid. Remembering the evening I last heard his voice was the most painful. His exuberant presence had always filled a room. His absence created a cavern. A loved one described it well. There's such a goneness. The sense of void dominated my early days of grieving. I had thought that the many losses of the previous decade would prepare me for this final one. With each disease-related change, there was an aspect of Dale that I missed. I learned to live with absence amid presence. But there was no preparation for the final loss. Complete absence, emptiness, goneness. There were times when the darkness and emptiness seemed total, when the absence felt too much to bear. I missed him, every version of him. I still do. However, now I see that throughout these months, I have been accompanied. Although the emptiness felt complete, it never was. There was presence amidst absence. That presence was love expressed in countless ways, shining light in the darkness. Again and again, love appeared through warm hugs, thoughtful gifts, and caring messages. Each one made a difference. And even the memories of them now left my heart. Love came through music shared among family and friends, through visits and trips with loved ones. Love appeared through nature's beauties and daily wonders. The miraculous camellia in full bloom despite winter's chill portrayed love's enduring presence. Even a feisty little wren couple nesting in a birdhouse that had been empty for years provided signs of life and hope to me. Recently, as I was drifting off to sleep, I experienced one more. It was, if, it was as if I deep, knew deeply, just for a few seconds, that Dale's love was with me and a part of me. Neither a touch nor a whisper, but something as gentle as those. It, it was as if this warm, his warmth and his smile were wrapped within me, a deep abiding presence. For this pressure, precious gift and for all the expressions of love's presence and light amid the darkness of grief, I give unending thanks, truly. So faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. When I read those words, I thought, this is, this is the night to think about this, to think about uh, what she describes here as presence amid absence. That even in the midst of the absence that we feel, 
for the ones that we love, whether they, are, they have passed away, whether they are far away, whether there is grief over the, the destruction or breaking down of a relationship, whatever the absence is, the good news that John gives us, the good news of the gospel is that there is presence amid absence. And that tonight is what we hold on to, is presence amid absence, light shining in the darkness. And so I pray, my prayer for you this night is that we would feel together the presence amid absence, to know that it is okay to feel the absence. It is okay to feel and miss and hurt and be sad, even though it's Christmas and everything is supposed to be good. It's okay to feel that. It's also okay and good to know that God's presence is here amidst absence. And not only that, because we believe in the communion of saints, those that we love that are here no longer are present through the Spirit amidst absence. So it is my, again my prayer that tonight, on this longest night, you would experience presence amid absence, the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. pray with me. Holy God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to hold this space. Gracious God, if we are grieving, we pray that we would know your comfort. And if we are suffering, that we would know that you are present with us and that you walk along with us. If this is the first holiday season without someone we love, we pray for the presence of of your spirit as we feel that absence. 
If there is someone we love or many people we love far away from us, in the midst of our longing, help us to know that you join us, that we long to be together just as we long for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to feel your presence even in the midst of absence and help us to be your presence to each other when we are feeling absence. Lay your spirit upon all those who watch in this moment and every moment to know that it is okay to feel however they're feeling, but also to know that in the midst of the darkness that your light is with us, that you are not afraid to enter the darkness with us, but that you walk with us, that you give us strength, that you accompany us, that you know darkness and you know light and you know life. We pray that your life would continue to be in us, that we would find our life in you. For this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this longest night service. I pray that on this long night that you would still know the light of Christ, that Christ would enter into that darkness, any that you feel, and to know that the light and life has entered in the world in Jesus Christ. We hope that you'll consider joining us on Christmas Eve here at First United Methodist Church. We have two in-person services, one at 5 o'clock, a family service, as well as a more traditional service at 9 p.m., um, both of them are in the sanctuary. Both of them have candlelight and communion and singing Silent Night. We also, of course, have an online service at 7 p.m., which you can join us for that as well. But however you choose to celebrate Christmas, we hope that you will experience the light of Christ. So I invite you to go forth in the name of the Christ who is light and life, even in the midst of our darkness, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.